Good morning, my precious brothers and sisters in Christ. The time draws so near. The Lord is with us all. He is watching. He is guiding. And he is giving us his word daily. We are to eat of the word of the Lord because it is nourishing to our souls. We are to love the word of the Lord because it is the truth and it is the life. It is our connection and our love letter to the Lord, from the Lord. Whenever we read his words, remembering his words is the love letter to us. When, he re when we read his words, we are connecting our souls to him again because the love letter is a two-way message. If you contemplate and meditate, he says, meditate on my words daily and in your bed, lie upon your bed and meditate upon me. That's how we connect with him. We walk through our days living in a world that we don't belong in. And when we come across something, if we've meditated on his word, when an opposition approaches us, we can see it, we can discern it, and we can avoid or overcome it. We have the power through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Now, he gave me a dream a couple of nights ago, and at the end of the dream, a very clear sound spoken to me said, read Mark and I woke up at that now the dream was rather um, science fiction-y if you like um, it actually reminded me of a movie many years ago called I think it was called The Mist or The Fog or something like that it was very reminiscent of that something was in the fog but I'll tell you what happened in my dream it appeared that I was standing at an airport getting ready to board. And you know how there's those beautiful, or those of you that have ever been to an airport, there are those beautiful big windows that seem to stretch forever. And you can see everything from the safety of inside. But as I was looking out, this mist began to come in from all sides, just coming in, getting thicker and thicker and thicker. And you saw it, it had demarcation lines where it was solid, then it was the clear space. You watched the clear space get smaller and smaller and smaller until finally it was oppressed against the window. And you couldn't see anything. And then suddenly, from the fog, was massive artillery attack, uh, guns, weapons, not, not big, big stuff, but bullets. But these bullets were like, well, they were huge. They were like, I don't know, about four inches long and extremely sharp points and very long barrels at the bottom of them. They looked impressive. They were very scary bullets. Now, I don't think that's how bullets come out of the gun. I think parts of it break off and that. But in this case, the whole bullet came, the, ca the backing and all. It wasn't just that pointy end. It was the whole thing was coming through and it was just mowing down people. And then every now and again, in the midst of the mist, because you saw it going off, the flashes going off in the mist as well. And every now and again, you would see a bit of a clearing and someone would raise a, a white flag or a white sheet even. Anything white was being raised. And all that did was draw the attention of the fire to that. And then there became a pile of bodies covered by a pile of the bullets. I know bullets don't work that way, but this is 
the visual effect that I saw with this passer telling me that a lot of ammunition was thrown at them and they perished. They tried to surrender and be taken captive, but there were no captives taken. And then at the end of that scene, I still remained, but at the end of that scene, a voice said, read Mark. And I woke up. And when I went to my Bible and it was upside down and I opened my book and it opened at Mark, but it didn't open at the first page where my dividers are. It opened at Mark 3, Mark 2. Hold on, let me just, I beg your pardon. I, I turned my page. No, it was at Mark 1. So it was, it was on like the second page of my mark, of my mark, <laughs> our mark, on the second page. And it was verse 21, it was highlighted 21 and down to 29 or 28. Now, if I may read this to you. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. They were all amazed insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this thing? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do immediately obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region about Galilee. Now, what I'm, this is, when I turned the book up right, this is what hit my eyes. And the thing was that all of the people in the, in the synagogue that day did not know that man had an unclean spirit or he would not have been allowed in. There are rules in the church and there are rules in the synagogue. They would not allow a person with unclean lips or unclean um, spirit into their um, congregation so nobody knew this but God could see it Jesus could see the unclean spirits he had the vision ability to see it to discern it because he is God but he is telling us that we who believe in him and follow him we are also granted discernment so we can see the unclean spirits around us. In my dream, there was a mist or a fog over the unclean spirits. No one could see. We were, I think my airport was actually a symbol of the church. Those that thought they were in the safety. And they couldn't see this coming. They were blind to it. And when it arrived, they thought they could wave the flag and survive it. But they couldn't. They didn't have the discernment. <coughs> Pardon me. But the true believer will see it. Maybe not with their natural eyes, but with their spiritual eyes, they will see what is going on around them. And just as this, no one saw what was coming, who was coming, 
but the attacks were real. The attacks came. They only saw the, the darts and the arrows, bullets. They saw that, but they didn't know who was doing it, where it was coming from. It was just coming from the mist. But Jesus said he, he saw them. When the church didn't see them, when the synagogue didn't see them, he saw them. That tells us that we too will see them. We may be in a church that is full of these enemies who are giving, sending out the darts and the arrows. They're within us, but they are not of us. We have to be wary. We have to not surrender to them. Our modern churches are so laid as in that they are giving in to the enemy, surrendering because they don't want trouble. They think, if I surrender, they won't shoot me. It's all PC. Uh, I'm, I know that, that has the meaning. Um, politically correct, right? I've told you before, the word politics is a word politically correct is actually means lying saying a lie is the truth that's what political correctness is because a politician's job is to not tell you the truth but tell you what they think you want to hear in order to turn you to their will to do their will it's a manipulation ploy they learn at, I've told you, they learn at universities and colleges how to tell a lie. There is a course called Political Science and it teaches them. I know this because I attended a university and I was placed to do that course, which I could not do. I saw how they did the manipulation of truth into a lie. They could make somebody prove, using a formula, they could prove anything. They could prove a lie to be the truth and the truth to be a lie. By a formula of speaking, if this and this, then this, this is and this isn't, but this and this had nothing to do with reality. Now, I had to deliberately fail the course I could not complete the course because the last exam is when I realised what it was. The final exam, and I could not get a different question. In my final exam, I've told you before, I would have had to... The, the exam question was to write a wonderful big um, statement proving that God did not exist using their theories of argument. I, to pass my exam, all the other questions I could do, but this was the biggie at the end, the last major question. And without this, this one had like more than 50% of the mark. So without it, I could not possibly pass. And I left it blank and said no. Because to pass that exam, to get that degree that I was aiming for, I had to denounce the, the truth of God. And I had to prove, using their method, that he did not exist. So politics is a lie. Therefore, po political... Um, What's it called? I forgot the word. See, I'm so adamant against politics. Oh, Where well, you've got to be politically correct, that's the word. Politically correct means you have to be correct in their lie. You have to agree with the lie. So do never agree to political correctness because it is simply confirming the lie. And God warns us in the last days they will 
call the truth a lie and the lie a truth. And that's exactly what they're doing. And this is happening in our churches. They are becoming politically correct. And the ministers, they're not true ministers. They're the wolves in sheep's clothing. Bringing people away from the truth of God. And the truth of God says to follow Jesus. They're saying, no, you can be in the world, enjoy the world, and it's all good. The Bible does not do that. You know that. Everywhere it says, if you love me, you will. If you love me, you will. That's the, that's the proof of love. You will do my commandments. You will walk in my precepts and my commandments. You will do the work of the Father. You will. This is not salvation. This is the proof you have salvation. So all those church leaders that are teaching otherwise, they are the ones in the shadows that you don't see because you're not using your discernment to look through the fog they're creating. They are creating the fog in the church. There's enough political um, attack in the world but within the churches, you have the hierarchy of many churches and the, the people sitting in many churches who are creating the fog, creating the mist to confuse and blind the people. And the only way you can be not blinded by their lies is to go to your Bible, the Holy Bible, to go to your Bible and ask it, what did you say, Lord? Did you say I could be a homosexual and actively participate in the corruptions of the world and still be following you? No, it does not. It says to you, if you truly believe and you have him in your heart, the Holy Spirit comes into you and he leads you into all righteousness, into all truth. And you get the grace of God that teaches you how to live, how to live. There is it in the word, but beyond the word, he will come into you and teach you. So every time something comes up, should I do this or that? The grace of the Lord reminds you of God's word and therefore it teaches you this is the way to go, this is the way not to go. But the church leaders that do not teach this are anathema and they will find their place in hell. God is very specific about this. We must, we are getting so close to the end, you can see it. The latest thing I heard was that there was um, a small announcement that, now the validity of this, this is, um, I've only got this from an, an article I saw on Stephen Bendanoon. He is a Christian Jew, he does have, some unusual beliefs that I don't find biblical, but he does get information. And I don't want to speak ill of him because I think he is trying very hard. And he has taught me some things. I, I truly believe he has taught me some things. So I will not speak evil of him, but through I cannot take everything as spoken because I don't know myself to validify. So this may be um, something that's only a rumour and God said there will be rumours. But if this is, I haven't yet searched it out and perhaps someone else can. He stated that there was an article in a... I think it was a French um, publication 
where Israel just gave um, Donald Trump the crown of peace and called him the Prince of Peace. Now, if this and called him the Messiah, if this is true, they have been saying for ages they have been speaking to the Messiah for quite a while now. If they have just declared him the Messiah, that is a very serious time to be in. But God said there will be many that will come up and be called this. Is he the final one? I don't know. But it is again reinforcing that the politics is all about the lie. We cannot see a man as our saviour. We have a saviour and his name is Yeshua. Yeshua the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. I know there's a lot of ways to say it. Jesus the Christ. He, um, I can't say the Greek one, but it's definitely not the Muslim one. That is a different Jesus. We were warned if someone teaches a different Jesus, theirs is a different Jesus. Theirs is a sinful, corrupt Jesus. Has a lot of the attributes of our Lord, but then they add sinfulness to it. That's not our Jesus. Their faith started out from Christianity, to be truthful when you go down the history of it. But just like we are now with this mist being brought in, the mist was brought in too. They were linked with um, the Ottoman Empire and the Islamists. They were linked to Hitler. They had a theology in common. It was the Aryan. If you go back to the beginnings of the church in round about 300 or so, I'm not sure, it was somewhere in that era, there was a an Aryan sect that came about. And they believed Jesus was a prophet, but they denounced him as deity. They denounced him as the son of God. This is the same thing that the Muslims are touting and pushing and pushing. They came from an Aryan sect. His first wife, Kadisha, Muhammad's, if Muhammad even existed, but supposedly the first wife, Kadisha, was of the sect of the Aryan Christians, which was a heretic set. And that's where he learnt his stories from and then built it on from there. But Hitler also believed in the Aryan sect, that Jesus was a good good prophet but he was not God on earth. The Arians were the deniers of the divinity of Jesus. Today we've got the Jehovah's Witnesses and the I think the Seventh Day Adventists, the Mormons, all of those have that same Arian, they've come from that same sect but again branched out. But that's the mist that's been perpetrated on us. Satan has placed in amongst us. Remember he said they departed from us because they were never of us. They came in unto us but we did not see them because we were using our natural eyes. We have to now look Look at history, before it's erased, by the way. Look at the true history and look at what is happening around you, not just in the world, my brothers and sisters, but what is happening in the churches. Is that fog, is that mist coming in and blinding the people? If it is, the bullets will follow. 
the darts and the arrows will attack those people and no mercy will be given. It is time to use the spiritual eyes that you have and warn others when you see the fog coming. We are to be watchmen. Well, I'm not a watchman on the wall. Don't get me wrong. There are beautiful brothers and sisters who are definitely watchmen on the wall. I would not want their responsibility because if they do not call out something, it is held against them if something bad happens. If the people aren't warned, they have such a burden upon them. The burden is light because of Jesus, but is still such a strong calling. All I've been asked to do, my darlings, is to encourage you bring you to the word of God to use your discernment to open your eyes to listen to the watchmen when they call but be a Berean because some call themselves watchmen that are not some call themselves prophets that are not they were throughout the Bible remember God said if what they say does not happen they're not of me if anything, they may have ten correct, but if one of those doesn't happen, they're not of me. And you think, well, how can they possibly get any correct if it wasn't from God? Because if, think of it this way, if Satan has put false prophets out there, he will do false wonders, but he knows when he's going to do it. So he will say to a false prophet, in January this year, I am going to put such and such in power in a country and I am going to have such and such assassinated. And these people get their message and they say it, to, I've heard and here we are and there that happens. But that was simply Satan knowing he was going to kill somebody. Or telling people it looks like this is going to happen, but it's not. Some, you're going to be safe. Well, what happens there? Satan's out there. He's stirring up a big trouble with his demons and his forces. But to bring on the prophecy to make that man look like he is a prophet, he stops his army on that time and says see he got the prophecy right he must be of God until bit by bit people start to listen to that one they're not listening to the one that gives them the hard word of God but they're listening to the one that gives them the good news and then he will give them a false story and they will believe the lie When the prophets spoke of old, remember in the time of wars and all the prophets of the land told the king, we will be victorious, such and such an army will be defeated by you, my king. And one prophet, the true prophet of God, came in and said, no, king, I have had word of God. That army will defeat you because you have walked away from the Lord God, they put him in jail. But what he said was true and what they said was the lie. But the king believed the lie. We cannot believe the lies. We already have the prophet's words. We already know what God said is going to happen. We need to understand what he says. We need to read and take into our hearts what he says, this is the truth. This will come to pass. There will be a slight time of what appears false peace before the tribulation. That is true. Before we go, there will be an easing. Remember um, one of the leaders said, 
when he became the leader. I am the calm before the storm. And everyone said, what's the storm? And he said, ah, <laughs> you've got to wait for it. Here's the calm. There is going to be a small calm before we go because otherwise they could not be eating and drinking. They could not be marrying and giving in marriage as it was before, before Noah was taken up, before Lot was taken away. It could not be a normal time just before the rapture. And as I've said to you many times, every single time I have seen a portent of the rapture, it has always been at the instant absolute terror around me happened. There was one of them, remember, there was this tsunami coming and just in time and another, there was a war happening just in time. It was always a just-in-time moment. And the very vision that I saw when I was given the instruction to use my voice, it was strange. I didn't understand what he meant, use my voice. But I was running for my life and a door was in front of me and on the door it said, door came from nowhere. It was sudden, blank wall, then a door. And on the door was a sign, and the sign said, Time for rapture, prepare the bride. I'm the old lady asked to help you to prepare. You're the bride, and I'm the one, one of the many, I'm, I'm this big, one of the many asked to help you prepare. Your preparation is entirely focusing on God's word. Not on man's word, because man will deceive you. Please, please, please get yourself a solid, what do you call this, a handy-held Bible. A real, real Bible. Again, I always go King James Version. I know people argue against it. I trust it with my life my soul anything made after the 1960s is so corrupted that it is not a bible you at least have to go before the 1960s anything where people still had fear of the lord so if you've got something back a bit maybe there's not as much um but you, you really need to try and get back to the basics and understand that the words were true. When God said to you, put your trust in me and follow, pick up your cross and follow, he meant follow. How do we know where to go? We follow his words. He's given us the map to our future. He's given us the map to our choice. Choose today whom you may, whom you will follow. Choose, I put before you life and death. Choose life, he said. This is life. Choose Jesus. Don't let anyone dissuade you. Choose Jesus. I am the, the life, the light, the way. He is salvation. Through no other name can man find salvation because salvation is of God and Jesus is God. He is the God incarnate on earth. He is the one that died on the cross and took your sins. He is the one you can lean on. He is the one who will come for you. He is the one that will comfort you. And he is the one that loves you. All the false gods want you as a slave. Jesus said, you will be my brother, my sister, my mother. If you follow me, if you 
hear my voice. I will come and dine with you. He is outside of time now. For that moment God came to earth. The Father God was still in the heavens, seeing over everything. The Holy Spirit was still omnipresent. All of that was still omnipresent, but he had to come in a present form, in a local form, that he could come to earth and experience and show himself. It would be impossible to be omnipresent while walking with mankind because there'd have to be millions of him. He came as one. He showed himself. He taught us the truth. He un made us understand what the Old Testament was all about. Not that it is to be thrown away. He said, I didn't come to dis destroy it. He said, I came to fulfill it. The word fulfilled doesn't mean to finish it off. The word fulfill, when you fulfill a promise, it means that I'm telling you that promise is true. I am going to do my part. I'm going to pay. I'm going to fulfill the promise by doing what it says. He fulfilled the law. He obeyed the law he told us obey the law not the um not the temple laws not those laws the commandments of god that were given basically the ten commandments he fulfilled them but he also showed us how we can fulfill them he shows us how in the one the one parable he said about, no, it wasn't a parable. It was simply a, a statement. It is written that you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that he who looks upon a woman with lust has already committed adultery in his heart. This, when you look at it in Jesus's words, take that back to King David and the story of King David. He had no intention of breaking the God's commandments because he thought himself a, he was a king by God's ordination. He was an appointed, an anointed king. But what did he do? He went out on his veranda, up on the rooftop, and he looked out and there were sort of high-rise buildings and there he saw, and everyone says, oh, well, she was naughty. But remember in those days, you didn't have the rambling houses that you do now with a room here and a room there. It's like living in the big city towers. People are up there looking and they're gazing out and the person in the other building doesn't think someone's looking at them. And they're living their life with their curtains open because they like the light. Or they like to the cool breeze. Imagine a hot area like the Middle East. They want that cool breeze. But they don't have a thousand rooms. And they need the cool breeze. And the, she's a married woman, so she thinks she's safe because no one's supposed to touch a married woman. And she lives near the palace, so she thinks very safe. And the king simply looks out and he saw, but he didn't turn his eyes. He had the choice at that moment to turn his eyes away. But he kept his gaze and he looked at her. And from looking at her came the lust. The lust instantly started him scheming how to take her and he plotted and he planned it was the lust of the eye that then led to the adultery and finally to murder of her husband it led to him lying it led to him trying to um, falsely accuse the husband 
It led him to try to deceive the husband. It led to him plotting to kill the husband and having him killed, which is murder. That one thing where he refused to avert his eyes as a godly man should, and Jesus said, the lust of the eyes, and that leads to sin. So Jesus is saying, well, not only is it a sin, but this is how it works. So we have to remember this is the word of God. And if you keep the word of God, he will keep you. That's so important, but the church isn't saying that anymore. The church is not giving you this, the meat of the word. They are only giving you not even milk anymore. It's skim milk. They've stopped giving you milk. They're giving you skim milk. It's got none of the goodness in it. It's had all the, the fatty bits taken out, all the sustaining. Remember, fat gives you cholesterol. Cholesterol is what your brain is made of. Cut out the cholesterol, you cut out your brain. Cut out your cholesterol, you take away the the part of you that creates the hormones that determine sexual orientation, basically. So people that are cut down on cholesterol are cut down on the things that identify them in the way God identifies you. Stops the procreation component of your self-being. Stops the memory part of your self-being. So even if you read it, it falls out again. They have taken that, the cholesterol, out of the Bible, the part that feeds your brain, the part that feeds your hormonal identity. They have washed you down to being a mere shell. And that shell can have the mist cover its eyes very quickly. You must not allow the mist to come into your life. You must be strong. You must read the words of the Bible. God is your, your focus at this point. The world is going to go into exactly what it says, but there has to be this little peace. Remember when they say peace and safety, then all sudden... Also, when we go, then all sudden. So there has to be a peace that lulls people. Don't let the mist cloud your eyes. Stay in the word. Don't be discouraged. And please listen to those that are calling and watching for you. Listen to them. Take what they say to the Bible. And you will know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Because he loves you. I love you, but you know he loves you more. He loved you so much that he came to this earth. He took off the glory that he had in heaven. And he came down to earth. He walked among us. He showed us the truth. He, he fulfilled the the prophecies. Some have been fulfilled, some are yet to be fulfilled, but he fulfilled to that point. He read in the synagogue Isaiah, and at that point he said, this has been fulfilled to this point. There's more to come, but this has been fulfilled in your sight. He did all of that. And then he said, it is finished. I've paid the debt. I've made the way for you I've given you the map I've done it what do you need to do pick up the word pick up the map follow him follow the map and watch watch always and when he does come again for you you want to be able to just say Yippee, not, oh no, not today. <laughs> so, get yourselves together. Watch, wait, be.
be patient just because he hasn't come yet. Don't let someone tell you he's not coming. He told you. They will say, where is his coming? You've been saying forever. It's not up to us, it's up to him. When the time is right, he will come. Not when we want him, he said. It won't be when you think. And you know, I always think it's going to be Feast of Trumpets. But every other appointed time do. <laughs> I'm happy with them all, but it might not be on an appointed time that we know about, but on his appointed time that we haven't yet understood. So, oopsie doopsie wait a bit. Okay, well, my loves, my day is just starting. Dad is up. And so, sorry for the interruption, but it, perfect timing. God knows his timing. He knows his timing. So I leave you with this knowledge that God loves you. I love you, but God loves you. And I pray for you. And I pray that God will make his face shine upon you. Imagine that. Yeah. Make his face shine upon you and give you peace, the peace beyond all understanding. And may you have joy in your soul, even in the face of tribulations that are here. But may he save you out from the great tribulation that is to come. In Jesus' name, I pray this. God be with you all, my loves, until there or here, preferably there. God bless you all. Amen.